Hello world, my name is Colby Cajero and I am the 33 year old breast cancer survivor patient. And today is Sunday, December the 5th and it is four days after my double mastectomy with breast reconstruction surgery. At least the initial stages of breast reconstruction, the second phase will take place later down the line. So recovery is going well. Yesterday and today I have just been trying to rest as much as possible and just listen to my body and listen to what it needs. So if my body's telling me it needs to sleep, I just pass out in our in the recliner in my living room. And if I, um, when I go to bed at night, I just sleep until my body says it's time to get up. And I'm taking it really, really easy. I'm so glad that I had my meals planned out ahead of time, thanks to Coach Lexi. And uh, we got all of that prepared the Sunday before my surgery. Today, it, so normally before my uh, breast cancer diagnosis and, and everything, um, Sundays were a day for laundry and meal prepping. And so today was no different. I had my mom and my husband help me with those endeavors though. And they've been troopers. So mom has helped me with the meal prep and hubby has helped with the laundry, which is super awesome. Um, this week I just planned out some meals that were just super easy to make and uh, didn't require that much effort to put in. So. I'm really thankful for that and I've got all my snacks and goodies and everything to for my in-between meals. So, so that's what's happening today. Um, yesterday was the first day since surgery that I had a bowel movement. In case you were not aware of this, constipation is a totally normal side effect after surgery and it's a completely normal side effect of opioid use, which is what the painkillers are that they give you post-surgery. So um, I have been drinking a gallon of water every single day. I've also been taking stool softeners as well, just to try to help keep things um, move, moving in the right direction. And so yesterday was the first bowel movement that I've had and I do not have one today. So tomorrow I will likely take a laxative as well in order to try to just keep, get things rolling and again, as long as you're taking those painkillers um, that are based on that are uh, opioid based, that is going to happen. That is a normal side effect, and so basically the doctors just want you to drink as much fluid, high fiber diet. Which because I'm vegan, that's not a problem for me to get the fiber, and I drink a gallon of water every day. That's not a problem for me to get water, but it still does happen. So. You just gotta be proactive about it, okay? So know that that is definitely something that you're probably going to go through and it's totally normal, okay? So don't let that freak you out. Especially even if you're a very uh, regular before the surgery, again, it's just because of the medication. So so don't let that freak you out. It is totally normal, all right? So, um, so other than recovering, I've had a few visitors come visit and say hi and I've gotten a lot of wonderful surprises from friends and relatives, just, you know, flowers and gifts. Coach sent me some protein bars that she thought that I would like and they're amazing and just some activities to keep my brain um, active and happy and just things to keep me, you know, books to read, things to keep me to focus on and, and to do in my downtime because all of my friends and family know how active I am and how much this is definitely uh, not in my personality to just sit and do nothing. And so I really appreciate all the support and love that I have gotten from my friends and family through this journey. And so I just think each and every one of you, um, family members have also sent DoorDash gift cards and Uber Eats gift cards. And oh, that's just so wonderful to help with, you know, especially when I don't feel like eating anything that I made or, you know, I'm just you know, I'm just not up for it. And it's just so wonderful to have that um, available to me. So thank you to everybody who has, has been here to support me and, and just help me through this journey and your kind words of just love and encouragement. I'm so grateful and just so blessed to have such wonderful people in my life. Um, today, I wanted to um, talk about the scripture from John 13, 34, I think it is. It says, uh, a new command I give to you. This is Jesus talking. He says, a new command I give to you, love one another as I have loved you, and by this everyone will know that you are my disciple. I just absolutely love this message because 
you know, the body of Christ, the spirit of Christ is love. And if you are exuding anything that is hateful or resentful or unforgiving, that is not Christ-like. That is not from the Lord. And so it challenges us as Christians to even, you know, are people that we don't like, people that just hurt us and in ways that are unimaginable. We have to... God commands us to love them still because he has loved us through dying for us on the cross. And so I think that that's just a very powerful message that, you know, we can all learn. And especially every day, you know, somebody pisses us off in traffic or, you know, somebody just says a, something that's just hurtful or rude or, you know, something like that. Somebody takes our parking spot when we were waiting for it in the parking lot or, you know, whatever the case may be. You know, um, we just get, we can get angry and upset at things and, you know, the Lord just commands us to love one another as he has loved us. And I just think that that's so powerful. And I try to do that on a daily basis. You know, the Bible also says, you know, pray for your enemies. And I definitely, as hard as it is, I try to do that as well. Um, because that's just what the Lord asks us to do. And, you know, as his as his followers, that's what we're commanded to do. And even though it, it, it's pride that you have to swallow whenever you are praying for those people. And so remember that. So if you get into a position where, you know, you know, it's the right thing to do. The only thing that's holding you back is your pride. And just remember that Jesus wasn't prideful. He wasn't boastful. You know, he was humble and that's what he, we should be as well. And so, um, I'm not perfect at this by any means, and I fall short of it every single day because I'm a human and I sin every single day, but it is definitely something that I try to work on, and I just challenge you to work on it as well. Dental fun fact for the day. So last episode, we said that, you know, the, the tooth enamel was the hardest substance in the body, that it's harder than bone. Um, to, teeth are also the only part of the human body that cannot repair itself. So once that cavity has started, a dentist has to intervene in order to heal the tooth and remove that bacteria and seal it up so that the bacteria doesn't come back. So remember on that note, it's super important to, if you have not done so already, you've got to make sure that you're seeing the dentist every six months for just checkups and make sure that everything is healthy. It's so important that you make sure that you're brushing for at least two minutes twice a day and flossing at least once a day. And if you're a braces patient, make sure you're brushing for four minutes twice a day and flossing at least once a day. And, you know, just to reiterate from another video, um, if in this journey with um, the limited mobility of the arms and things like that. So like, uh, just to recap, I am still numb through my chest area. I have no feeling at all in this right armpit. So trying to put deodorant on is extremely odd to me because I can't feel it even though I know that I am like seeing myself rub that area, but I can't feel it. It's super weird. And um, again, this is a normal post-op uh, effect and that sensation may or may not come back from what I've been told. So it's just one of those wait and see kind of things. And so... Um, so again, with the brushing and flossing, it might be challenging for brushing with a regular manual toothbrush in the little circles because you might, it, it just might tax you to lift your arms like that or to be doing that motion. All right. Totally normal. Highly recommend an electric toothbrush. You just have to make sure that your bristles are pointed at a 45 degree angle towards the gums. And then just turn the turn the electric toothbrush on and just let it let it do the work for you. So you just gently glide when the electric toothbrush is on across each tooth. Okay. Do not go back and forth when you're brushing your teeth, either with a manual or with an electric toothbrush. Okay. If you don't have a manual, or excuse me, if you have just a regular manual toothbrush, you just go in little circles. Okay. With that 45 degree angle pointed towards your gums. And then um, for flossing. Dental, the little placards, the little dental sticks, the little floss sticks, those are fantastic, um, especially if you don't have the dexterity to be able to floss like you normally would, okay? So any of those will help, as well as a water pick. You know, all of these things are not as good as physically flossing, so I highly recommend if you're not 
physically flossing with a normal strand of floss that you use the little uh, dental floss picks or the water pick at least twice a day just to help you know because again there's none of those is going to be as good as physically flossing okay and the the little dental stick or the flosser sticks those um are too taut to be able to wrap around like a horseshoe so um so definitely do that at least twice a day as well gum chucks if you've ever heard of those you can buy them on amazon those are fantastic too um, I talked about those in a previous video as well. All these aids can help you with the brushing and flossing, especially, like I said, if you've got limited mobility or limited range of motion in your arms during your recovery. Anyway, that's all for me today. I hope that you all are doing well and we're going to keep crushing this journey and kicking cancer's ass. Thanks.